Hey, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to reInvent 2018 Recap. Uh, my name is Ben Willett. I'm a senior solutions architect with uh, AWS here in San Francisco. And uh, I want to spend about an hour with you today talking about uh, Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth. Uh, so I realize it's uh, after lunch, it's late in the day, and uh, I appreciate you all uh, sticking around for the talk. Uh, I'd like to keep this uh, interactive, so if there are questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand. I'll do my best to answer. Uh, we've also got a uh, moderator online for the Twitch folks. Hey, Twitch. And uh, feel free to punch in some questions, and our moderators will, will try to get them answered in real time. Okay. So let's talk about uh, Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth, uh, how to build high quality and highly accurate uh, ML training data sets. So if I was gonna sum up this talk in one slide and let you guys go have a beer somewhere, I would just say garbage in, garbage out, right? This has been true for 200 years now since Charles Babbage did his pioneering work in uh, computing back in the 1800s. And what I mean by that is basically you've got to have really, really good input if you're expecting to get really, really good output. Right? And so when we talk about training data sets, it's all about uh, really having a, a nice clean set of data coming in, training, and building a model that's very accurate that's going to produce really good inferences. And so, um, you know, what does this look like in reality? We're going to take a very, very simple use case. Uh, we're going to identify uh, some cats and dogs. And um, basically, um, the role of data labeling is to um, basically take unlabeled data set. We've got a bunch of random images in an S3 bucket. And we want to uh, feed those in and build a really accurate model to identify dogs. And so to do that, we've got to um, provide some input right? to our model, and so what we're going to have to do is label a whole bunch of photos of dogs and basically say, yeah, this photo has a dog, or this photo has a border collie, or this photo has no dogs, uh, but we've basically got to label uh, that uh, input so that we can build a high quality model that's going to be able to make very accurate inferences. And uh, as you'll see, uh, you know, labeling is hard, right? It's uh, giving you a simple example of, you know, labeling dogs. Maybe you've got uh, the dogs at Amazon data set. Uh, you go to Amazon and see lots of pictures of our dogs at work, which is pretty cool. Um, but, you know, typically you're looking at a very large scale data set where you've got millions or tens of millions of things that you need to label. Uh, so very large data sets. Uh, a lot of these need humans to perform the labeling, right? And it is extremely time consuming. Uh, paying those humans is extremely expensive at scale. And again, it's very difficult to achieve very high uh, accuracy. So in the case of labeling dogs, it's very easy to look at a photo and draw a bounding box around the dog and say, OK, that's a dog, or maybe that's a border collie. But in the example we're showing here, let's say this is uh, autonomous driving, we've got to label every single object in the street. We've got to have the street surface itself. We've got to have cars. We've got to have street lights. We've got to have pedestrians. We've got to have balls that bounce out in the street. And as you can imagine, um, we need millions and millions and millions of frames of video data to build a very accurate model that's going to be able to safely navigate that car uh, through the streets of even just one neighborhood, let alone a city, let alone a country. So you can see how this problem kind of snowballs out. But let's back up for a second and just talk about uh, Amazon SageMaker. So how many people are using uh, Amazon SageMaker today? OK, cool. So pretty new, new space to me as well. So machine learning is really exciting. We're seeing a reemergence of this in the industry. Uh, I'm old enough to have grown up in the batch era where we basically ran uh, data processing jobs on what happened last month or last quarter. So we would run reports 
against big data sets. We would produce green bar reports. You remember those reports on 132 column paper? And then a guy would literally drive up with a hand truck and drop a box of paper in my cube with this report in it. And people would leaf through these reports and try to figure out the state of their business, right? Then, thankfully, we fast forward into the streaming world where we now have real-time streaming analytics. You could use a service like Amazon Kinesis, and that's going to allow us to get real-time data about our business. For example, Amazon.com has some dashboards where they show the real-time quantity of orders flowing through the system. And we've been in business for 20 years, and we have very accurate predictions of what our order traffic looks like on any given day, a week, month, or hour. And if there's a spike or a drop, we're able to know that in real time. Uh, now with machine learning, we're not looking at the past and we're not even looking at the current state of the business, but we're able to actually predict out things that are going to happen in the future. And one of the use cases we talk about a lot is predictive maintenance. So one of the um, uh, examples I worked on at uh, Reinvent 2017 was a um, uh, oil and gas scenario where we had a pipeline, and this is billions of dollars of infrastructure. It's out in the field, and we've got pumps that are basically booster stations that are pushing that oil downstream, and those pumps are running 24-7. They've got bearings. Those bearings are running at 150 degrees. They run for years at a time. All of a sudden, that bearing temperature starts to spike, and what do we think, right? Okay. That bearing's been 150 degrees for the last two years, and now all of a sudden it's 155, maybe it's 160, 170. That bearing's gonna fail, that motor's gonna fail, that pump is gonna fail, and we're gonna have to take that asset offline, roll a truck, get people out there to replace that. Wouldn't it be great if we had a machine learning algorithm that could basically say, you know what? That thing varies a little bit every day. It's a little bit colder today. It's a little bit hotter. Maybe it's rainy. Maybe it's winter. We know what the variations are. But this uh, particular spike indicates to our model that that pump is going to fail. Let's roll a truck and let's proactively replace that motor uh, within a particular maintenance window so that we don't have um, a large scale outage. Right? And so the uh, resurgence of ML that we're seeing right now is pretty exciting because it enables us to do things like predictive maintenance. Um, it allows um, Amazon.com, for example, to do uh, recommendation engines. It allows us to do fraud detection. Uh, there's just so many uh, use cases that our customers, like Intuit and Siemens and Sony and Tinder and Chick-fil-A, are all coming to us with things that they want to do. We'll talk a little bit about Tyson Foods and how they're using this uh, later in the presentation. But basically, Amazon SageMaker allows you to build, train, and deploy uh, machine learning models very, very easily. This is a tool that we developed to democratize ML uh, for uh, AWS uh, developers. So if you've ever gotten in deep with some machine learning folks, they basically say, okay, let's do some handwriting recognition, and then all of a sudden there's like math, and you're like, oh no, uh, it's been a while since I did any serious math like that. Um, and so what we really want to do with SageMaker is provide a product that's approachable to AWS developers that's going to allow them to simply build, train, and deploy uh, machine learning models. Uh, and so the, the steps are basically you can start off with a pre-built uh, notebook, uh, we, we'll deploy a Jupyter Notebook instance for you. I'll give you a quick look at one of those later. Um, you can use one of our pre-built uh, algorithms inside of SageMaker. Uh, these are very common algorithms that you may have used in other ML contexts, but we've tweaked them to be able to scale very gracefully across very large fleets of uh, GPU instances at AWS. And so they're really designed to take advantage of the vast uh, compute available um, for you to do very large scale training in a very short amount of time. Again, one click, there's an optimization phase where you're gonna get back your model, you're gonna look at it, you're gonna say it's not quite right, I wanna do some tuning, 
and then you'll loop on that a couple of times, and then you'll do one-click deployment where you basically push your model out to your compute platform and allow inferences to begin. Is this a dog? Is this a border collie? Is this order fraudulent? Um, if I watched, um, I don't know, uh, Blade Runner, what else uh, would I like to watch uh, this evening on TV? Um, and again, uh, using the AWS infrastructure, both the training of the model and the inferences can be scaled uh, automatically to support the load of those two uh, very different workloads. So that's SageMaker, build, train, and deploy ML models. Where does ground truth fit in? Well, ground truth is the very first step. This is where we're gonna take that raw, unlabeled data. So in the demo today, just, uh, I don't know, 17 unlabeled photos of dogs, and we'll basically go in and draw bounding boxes around them, and we'll say there's a dog in this photo. Once we've got our uh, data set labeled, we can feed it into SageMaker. We can start building out our models, right? We can start the training process, and then we can deploy our model out so it's ready for use, ready for inferences. So this is something that's uh, available today. We launched at uh, reInvent 2018. We're in five regions, uh, four in the US and also Tokyo. So if you'd like, uh, after this talk, you can immediately dive in and get started. So I'm talking about data labeling at a pretty high level, but let's talk more specifically about what types of labeling uh, you can do with ground truth. So the first is uh, bounding boxes, and this is where you take an image, and uh, you, the question is, are there any birds in this image, right? So you literally go into our GUI, load up an image, draw a rectangle around it, and say, yep, there's a bird. Oh, there's two birds in this image, right? There is uh, image classification, so what is happening? Tell me an attribute about this photo. Are these guys playing basketball or soccer? Uh, semantic segmentation is a little bit more complex. This is where we get into self-driving cars where we basically want to label every single pixel in the image. We want to say this is the roadway, this is a car, this is a person, it's a woman, she's looking at her phone, she's got a handbag, there are buildings, and we want to have very high contextual um, description of exactly what's happening in the photo. Uh, text classification, this could be really simple. This could be, let's say, sentiment analysis on a um, product review or a restaurant review, right? So we'll take a block of text and we want to say, uh, you know, is this a positive uh, review of my restaurant or a particular meal or is this a negative review of my meal? And then we support the ability to do custom tasks. So if you don't, uh, your training job doesn't fit, or your, sorry, your labeling job doesn't fit into one of these uh, four pre-configured environments. Uh, you can actually build custom tasks uh, using our UI. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about active learning and uh, auto data labeling. So if you can imagine, you've got a million images that you've got to classify. This is a lot, right? It's gonna take a long time. So you can, you know, farm this out to a large population of people and either crowdsource this or have a, a workforce, and we'll talk about workforces in a couple of slides. Uh, wouldn't it be great if as you went and labeled a few of these images, uh, SageMaker Ground Truth in the background was able to create a model and start assisting you with labels. So the more images you labeled, the more Ground Truth learns and the better it's able to auto label images for you. So basically the way this works is We'll have our input data set, and again, I've got 17 dogs, but you can imagine there are you know, 50 million images in there. And active learning is basically gonna send some of those images to humans, and you, 
people are going to go in and draw those bounding boxes and say, yeah, there's a dog, it's a border collie. There's no dog, there's a dog, there's a cat, we don't care about cats, we're not cat people. Uh, and again, as we uh, label more and more images, uh, Amazon SageMaker Ground Truth is going to go in behind the scenes and start building a model and saying, you know what? I kind of got the hang of this. I'm going to go in and I'm going to start labeling these too. It's going to make uh, a pretty good effort to go ahead and auto label. And we're going to basically wind up saving a lot of time and a lot of money um, by having this auto labeling and active learning running in the background for us to assist us in our labeling jobs. And I've got some graphs to show you some of the speed advantages and also the cost advantages. Uh, of this. And then basically the end result is we've got a workforce that have identified um, and labeled a bunch of images. We'll do something called label consolidation that I'll get to in a couple of slides. And then we'll wind up with this nice labeled data set that's ready to feed in uh, to our model to start training on. Okay, and again, um, you know, when you require uh, folks to sit down and actually label these images, uh, you've got a few different options. Uh, you've got the public where you can crowdsource uh, labeling. Uh, Amazon has a service called Mechanical Turk, which is basically 500,000 folks who either full-time or in their spare time pick up jobs off Mechanical Turk and will actually do specific tasks for you. Um, so my wife participates in a project where uh, it's a conservation project where they want to track migration of uh, elephants. And basically what she does is to relax. Uh, this is what people in tech do to relax. Um, she'll go to the site and they'll show pictures and they'll say, is there an elephant in this picture? And she'll click no. Is there an elephant in this picture? Yes. Is there an elephant in this picture? And basically allows them to build a map of the migration routes of these elephants uh, throughout the course of a year. And um, the, uh, the scientists will then take that information and try to predict where these elephants are going to go and what they can do to the habitat to maybe support them and uh, allow them to thrive. Um, so that's Mechanical Turk. Again, it's 500,000 public workers um, that you can farm out these human labeling jobs to. Uh, now, your workload may be sensitive, right? Maybe you don't want your images. Oop. Looks like our. Okay. Uh, maybe your images are sensitive and you don't want them being just sent out to any random uh, person on the internet. Uh, in that case, you may have a team of employees uh, at your company and you may dedicate this team, hey, you guys are the labelers, right? You understand the images, you understand the data, you're going to be best at labeling it. And you set aside a team that will go in there and uh, label your data set. Uh, or you may not have just that many folks. You may have a ton of data to label, and you may want to outsource this to vendors. Uh, AWS makes this very easy if you've used the uh, AWS marketplace maybe to pull down an AMI or to pull down a set of firewall rules. Well, we now have sets of vendors uh, that will do this type of uh, data labeling work for you. And so you can just go into the AWS marketplace and find a number of vetted um, uh, vendors that will provide the workforce uh, for you to get that uh, labeling done. So how does it work? Uh, I'll take a quick look at the console here, and I'll, I'll try to give you a flip back and forth between PowerPoint and the, the console itself. Uh, but basically, uh, again, this UI is designed to be super simple. You go in and you create a labeling job. There's just a few questions you need to provide. One is the source bucket. So where does your data live? In this case, uh, we've got images in a bucket in S3. Uh, the output will be a folder uh, underneath that bucket in S3. Uh, we're going to describe the um, IAM role that this task will run in. So again, you've got a grant 
uh, SageMaker ground truth permissions to access your S3 bucket to pull the source images out and then to write the, the image classification data back to S3. So you'll either create an ARN or you can have a one button uh, create one for me as you have with many other AWS services. Uh, and then the last thing you do is you just pick the type of uh, labeling job you want. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna do um, bounding boxes uh, around our, uh, our puppies. Okay, so at this point, we've just specified a few things. Input bucket, output bucket, ARN for the IAM role for permissions, and then we've said we wanna do um, bounding boxes, and then we click uh, create my uh, labeling job, it's now running. At this point, I'm gonna switch hats. So I've gone from data scientist, machine learning guy, I'm gonna now put on my labeler hat, right? So I'm now either on Mechanical Turk, or I'm on the private labeling workforce in your company, or I'm at one of those vendors that you've hired. And I'm gonna go through this UI, and I'm gonna begin to label uh, these puppies, right? Now, what's great about this is the UI is customizable, and we really encourage folks to provide very concrete instructions to their labelers. Whether they're in-house, a vendor, or mechanical Turk folks, you wanna provide very crisp instructions to them so that they do a very high quality job of labeling your data so you can generate a very high quality model and very high quality inferences. So spend a little time on this and think about what are the instructions you wanna to provide to your user. So in this case, I've got a one sentence, draw a bounding box on any dogs you see in the image. Now that's a little terse, right? This is a demo, but I've got a good example on the left and then a bad example below that. So I'm showing folks exactly how tight I would like that rectangle to be around the image. And again, like I started off with, garbage in, garbage out. Give your workers uh, ex really crisp examples and they'll do a great job labeling your data. So once you've done a bunch, you can switch views in the console. You can see which images have been labeled. You can click on a particular image, and then you'll see the bounding box uh, here uh, around a particular dog. Now, what does that look like in reality, right? I gotta jump out of presentation mode here. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can read this, but this is a manifest file. This is the contents of my S3 bucket, and I know the font is a little small, but it basically has a source um, reference and then an S3 URL to each image in my bucket that I want um, to be uh, labeled. Now again, if you've got a few images like I do, I could have written this file by hand. If you've got millions of images, that's obviously not practical. And so SageMaker Ground Truth will, will generate a manifest for you automatically if you ask it to. So you can basically say, go create a manifest for everything in this folder or this entire bucket and we'll generate this file for you. And so this is the input that your labeling job is gonna use. It's gonna to go to this file and say, okay, first image is image1.jpg, label it, output. Second image is uh, image 11, go ahead and label it, write my output. And that output looks like this. It's just a JSON file. And again, I realize the font is, is tiny here, maybe I can get a little fancy. There we go. <coughs> And you can see we've got some information about our job. We've got the thing we're looking for, which is a dog. This is human annotated. We've got a confidence score, which is actually very low, 0 0.09, and we'll talk about why that is. And then we've got the bounding box. So this is the, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, Twitch. Um, So 
so we've got the, uh, the annotation, which is basically the width, the top, height, and left uh, boundaries. Wow. <clears throat> Okay, and then we've got the raw image size, which is basically 300 by 400 pixels. Uh, so again, the output uh, for that particular image is a bounding box with this annotation of width, height, top, left. Um, and then uh, again, you see this is a JSON array. So if there had been more than one dog in the image, you would see multiple uh, annotations in here. Uh, and again, this information is then input into the training of the model. We now have very good information about this is a dog in this particular image. We should have the image ID in here somewhere. And uh, it's based on that, it's going to begin training. It's going to provide a very good model. And then we're going to be able to provide very high quality inferences. If we go into the console, uh, you'll see some of the stuff I just talked about in the slides. So here we are at the SageMaker uh, dashboard. We've got ground truth here. We've got a number of other SageMaker features, including the Jupyter notebooks, the training algorithms, uh, inferences. But we look at our labeling jobs here. We've got a couple. Uh, you see I've got dog and uh, dog two. Um, we are in progress here. I've labeled 10 of 17 dogs. If I click on that job, we can get a little more detail. Example, uh, my input bucket and my output bucket. And then again, my ARN uh, for the permissions. Right. And then if I go over to the workforce, Again, it's a private workforce. Right? These are my guys running this. I've got an HTTP endpoint, so I've got a URL that my guys can log into. Let's see if I can do this here. Okay, awesome. Yeah, you see I'm uh, part of a group. So behind the scenes, uh, what we've done when we selected a private workforce for this particular labeling job is we're using a service called Amazon Cognito, which provides uh, identities. So we created a Cognito user pool. Uh, I added my uh, email address to it. It sent me an email saying, hey, Ben, uh, you've been invited to participate in the dog labeling uh, project. Uh, if you'd like to, you know, click here. And it takes me to the site. I log in, and I can now begin uh, labeling uh, these dogs. So I'm going to grab one of these. And you can see I've got a, a start working uh, button up here. It's going to go out, and it's going to find the first uh, unlabeled puppy. Uh, again, for, for demo purposes, I cut some corners. And on the left side, I didn't actually create a good example and a bad example image. This is worst practice, OK? As I mentioned earlier, give your users the most explicit instructions you can. So at this point, I can literally just come in, draw a box around this puppy. I'm going to try to be very precise here. The more precise I am, the better information I'm giving to SageMaker, and the better model it's going to generate, and the better inferences we're going to get. And that's really all there is to it. I just submitted my first one. It brings up the next one. And I can do as many of these as I want. OK, so let's jump back to some slides. We'll talk about how this actually works. OK. So we're very fortunate to have a, uh, a very senior uh, computer vision scientist and professor named uh, Pietro Perona, 
uh, who uh, teaches at Caltech and uh, works uh, on SageMaker Ground Truth and brings a vast amount of computer vision experience to AWS and has provided some great uh, insight into um, how to build uh, this service and have it be extremely um, accurate. And, um, you know, he's provided um, some good background. If you go to the recorded version of this session on, um, online, you'll, you'll get some deeper explanations around some of the math behind this. But basically, there's, there's two features that I want to kind of call out. Uh, the first is um, label consolidation. And then we'll talk about uh, auto labeling. So uh, I said I want to keep this interactive. So uh, it's after lunch. I know it's hard. Uh, but let's just do a quick survey. Uh, what kind of dog is this? Anyone? OK, we got Sharpe, Pug. Anybody? It's not a panda. It's not a giraffe. OK, Sharpe and Pug, right? So what we're doing is we've got a workforce of four workers here. And each one of them is going to see this image. So you've got some options in SageMaker Ground Truth to basically say, I want every worker to look at every image or I want an image to be seen by at least six workers. Uh, maybe you've got a set of 1,000 workers, and you really don't need 1,000 people to look at the same image. Um, so in this case, we've got four people who are going to look at this. Uh, first guy says it's Bulldog. Second says Sharpe, Bulldog, Bulldog. So of course, we're going to come up with Bulldog, right? Well, that's not right. OK, that would be a problem. We've mislabeled this Sharpe, right? So what do we do, right? We are going to use some probabilities. And again, this is scary. Uh, we're going to use some math. This is some Bayesian stuff that you guys may remember from school. I definitely do not. Do not quiz me on this. Um, but basically, we're going to use some math to say, uh, over time, we've built up a knowledge base about these workers. And they've classified a number of images. They've labeled a bunch of data. And they've been right a certain amount of time. So it turns out uh, user, uh, let's call it uh, Mr. Pink here, uh, has been right a lot. He's right 0.9% uh, of the time. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give that a very high weight. And we're actually going to overrule the other three people. And we're going to determine using math uh, that this is, in fact, a Sharpe with very high confidence of 0 0.9 and very low confidence that uh, it's actually a bulldog, even though more people voted for bulldog. Those folks that did tend to have lower uh, accuracy scores. And so using a lot of math, we're going to factor that in. And we're going to override those folks. And so basically what happens is because you've got a large distributed workforce and you're showing images to multiple folks and they're building up histories, we're able to give weights to different folks and uh, help you um, do the label consolidation to take multiple votes and come up with the best answer. So, Yeah, exactly. So the question was, why don't we just get rid of all those other people? So now, um, I actually don't remember what the uh, functionality in Mechanical Turk is, but uh, there may be a case where at a certain point you want to start excluding certain people from the workforce. Uh, but uh, again, that's a uh, decision uh, for the uh, team. Yeah, so the question is, yeah, so the comment is this assumes that you've got a knowledge base of the same workers um, coming in each time. If you've only seen one, predict one label from one user, you can't really infer much from that except that um, the other votes on that one image. So again, those scores will not be as refined as you might like. Um, so the other uh, piece that I like to talk about is active learning and auto-labeling. 
And basically the way this works is you're gonna start, and I kind of talked about this before, but let's review. You've got an input data set. You're gonna have humans look at those images. You're gonna have labels on them, right? What we're gonna do is while you're at work manually labeling images, we're learning from you, and we're gonna apply some of our own computer vision stuff behind the scenes, right? And now we're gonna start taking images out of the data set and automatically labeling them ourselves, right? And then we're gonna create this feedback loop where we've voted and you guys have all voted and we're gonna start again using that math, building that knowledge base and coming up with better and better predictions uh, for those labels and we're gonna be able to do more auto labeling. So it's a nice feedback loop. And basically to prove that out, uh, and again, I forget the name of this data set, but uh, it's online and it was a large um, uh, bird classification study that they did uh, and it was extremely high quality. They actually took two ornithologists and they made them manually go through um, thousands and thousands of birds and say this is a sparrow, this is a hawk, this is an eagle. Um, and so this data set is available online. I believe it's at Cornell University. And um, basically, I won't go through all these graphs, but we were able to prove out um, using um, SageMaker ground truth that we can have a higher accuracy and we can have a shorter time to label and a lower cost per image. And so, um, you know, if you want to study these graphs, they'll give you some really good insight into um, the value of SageMaker ground truth. Uh, we did the same thing with um, object detection. And what was really cool about this was uh, we took uh, our labeling, which is the orange box, and then we looked at the, uh, our, our automatically generated bounding box, which is the orange, and then we looked at the user uh, bounding box, and we found that across a large set of images, they were extremely close. And what this tells us is our auto labeling uh, does a very, very good job. And again, we've got some charts here to sort of back that up in terms of accuracy. And again, the speed at which we can uh, label and then bring that cost down. I think we looked at something like, um, you know, 15 cents per image and how we could get that down, um, you know, lower and lower using uh, auto labeling. And then the same experiment for um, uh, semantic segmentation. So in this case, we're identifying a part of the bird. We'll get to the whole bird. And then we've got a tree, and then we've got a blurred background. And what we want to do here is basically say, uh, we're, in this case, we're only, you see the labels on the right-hand side. We're only looking for bird. But we could just as easily label the tree as well, and any background objects. Okay, so let's dive into Tyson. So at AWS, we really put just a huge, huge focus on customers. They inform everything we do. You've heard AWS folks talk about how 90% of our roadmap is driven by customer feedback. Uh, as a solutions architect, I spend uh, all day, every day, actually, out in the field talking to customers about how they might use AWS um, services to build their applications, how to integrate with their on-premise environment, maybe build a, a cloud native application that they were talking about earlier on, on Twitch. Um, and uh, we learn so much from these conversations. It's not just us pushing information about you know, how to build these things, but what do customers need from us to make these solutions uh, effective? So uh, Tyson Foods is uh, I, I, one of the largest um, uh, protein providers uh, in the world, and they produce 20% of all chicken, beef, and pork in the United States. This is hundreds of thousands of animals and uh, millions of pounds of food produced every week. And again, you can imagine uh, on these large-scale farms, there's a lot of labor, there's a lot of manual processes. They're rough environments, right? These are farms, people get dirty, and they're not you know, uh, high-end, electronics-friendly uh, environments, right? 
Uh, and basically what Tyson wanted to do was basically modernize their inventory management. So how do we know uh, how many, let's say, birds do we have? And then as we get into processing, how many chicken breasts do we have? How many chicken legs? How many thighs? Are they packaged in sets of six? 12, maybe family packs of 24 that you might get at um, you know, Costco. And so we basically wanted to provide uh, some state-of-the-art uh, ML capabilities for these guys um, to be able to deliver this. So again, computer vision is hard enough when you've got a puppy sitting out in the sunshine but when you're maybe inside of a facility with varying lighting conditions, with varying um, you know, uh, environmental conditions, uh, you know, it just complicates things, right? So generating high quality training data is very difficult. Uh, they need thousands of images for each product, right? So if you were gonna you know, identify a chicken breast coming down an assembly line, um, man, that thing could be long or short or wide or thick or sideways. You need a lot of information to basically accurately say, that's a chicken breast, that's a chicken breast, that's a chicken breast. As you know from the earlier part of the talk, manual annotation is slow and time consuming. Again, they offer hundreds of products. So take that math for each product and multiply that by pork chops and steaks and everything else. Uh, and then again, the environmental challenges where we needed rugged equipment um, and um, limited internet connectivity. We're out on a farm, we're in the middle of uh, Iowa and we're on a cattle ranch, right? And we don't have the awesome LTE coverage that we have here in San Francisco. Right. So what we were able to do is using uh, SageMaker Ground Truth, automate, again, this tedious uh, annotation, right? Provide very fast labeling, and then using that UI that you saw before where I had draw a bounding box, here's a good image, here's a bad image, uh, they were able to actually build a custom classification task just because their requirements were a little bit more sophisticated and outside of those four pre-built classification tasks I talked about. And they were able to um, I build a model where they were able to identify 120 different classes using just 29 lines of HTML to customize that UI I saw. And here's a look at what they built. Uh, so again, it's gonna bring up a whole bunch of packages of, uh, can't actually tell if that's chicken breasts, let's go with that. And uh, they've got a private workforce dedicated to this. Uh, they've got six labelers and in about uh, four hours were able to get through uh, these images and they wound up with a trained model. Um, super interesting that they collected six million images and I'll show you the architecture diagram about how they did that on the next slide. Um, but it turns out only 21,000 images actually contained uh, product. So the camera is mounted, it's taking an image every second or every minute, whatever it is. And uh, there may be a point where there's just no product coming through, right? And so now we've got an opportunity um, to process things at the edge. Do we need every single image to be sent up to the cloud? Or is there an opportunity to do, do local processing and discard some of those blank images? And we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, but again, with very little customization, with very little time, they were able to um, build a very sophisticated model uh, to identify this food. And I'm gonna just go through this build automation fairly quickly. But the first part is uh, what we've been talking about, which is a private workforce at Tyson Foods, uh, pulling images out of S3 and the SageMaker Ground Truth and then the private workforce identifying those. And then over time, let me back up a second here, we're gonna use uh, AWS Greengrass, right, which is the ability to take our SageMaker model, deploy it onto Greengrass, right, and then push that out to the edge and run it on a snowball device in the customer's facility. So what we've done is, we've done all the labeling work, right? 
We've done all the training work in the cloud. And now that our model is tuned, it's seen a whole bunch of chicken breasts, it knows what to do. We can now use green grass to push that model out onto a snowball. So the snowballs have compute capacity on the device itself. So an AWS snowball is basically a ruggedized hard drive. You can get them in various sizes, I think 100 um, terabytes. And then on there, we've got the ability to basically run an EC2 instance, run your, your model, and then look at local images that are collected from a camera. And so we'll see this part here, right? So we've got a camera in the facility. They've got a whole rack of chicken breasts, right? So it's tray after tray after tray after tray of chicken breasts. The camera's looking down, it's taking pictures, it's sending them to the local snowball device. It's running inferences against the model on the snowball. And then we can send the interesting results back to AWS. So one of the great things about Greengrass is it allows you to do computing at the edge and only transmit bits that you care about. So when I talked about the millions of uh, images that they produced, I think it was six million images where they only had something like 20,000 with meaningful data on them. Um, you know, data is still expensive, right? If you're out in the middle of a field and maybe you don't have LTE and you've got a satellite connection, why push all those blank images up to the web and run inferences in the AWS cloud? Why not just look at those images on a local device in the facility, discard the ones you don't care about, annotate the ones you do, and then send those annotations back up to the cloud uh, for uh, more uh, uh, processing. Unless you want to know the downtime. Uh, sorry? All this time that there aren't breasts going across the screen, why, why is that? You should learn why that is. That's a great question. So by only sending the images uh, up that contain actual data, you may be obscuring the fact that there is all this downtime. Like, why weren't there any images for eight hours? What was going on there? And so this might be a great opportunity to put in a plug for uh, TimeStream, which is AWS's new uh, time series database. And it's able to take a series of events and notice gaps just like that, and then do some math and basically say, what went on here? Why did I get image, 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 and then a four hour gap? Let me basically allow the user to query and say, show me the downtime. And TimeStream is a great database for that. It's brand new, we announced it at uh, reInvent, and um, I encourage you guys to take a look at it if time series data is interesting to you. Uh, so again, at the end, Tyson uh, was successful and they were able to deploy their model to the edge in seven days uh, and it's running live inferences with cameras in their facility uh, against those chicken breasts. Uh, again, the first model was 85% accurate. I'm very confident with some tuning, they're going to be able to get that number way up and then um, uh, building full end-to-end -end computer vision pipeline, that's going to allow many, many, many more uh, use cases, right? So to sort of re recap, um, SageMaker Ground Truth uh, is going to assist you with uh, labeling uh, machine learning training data very easily with high accuracy at a very low cost. Again, you can pay folks in your organization <clears throat> you can um, use Mechanical Turk for crowdsourcing, or you can uh, engage one of the vendors listed on the AWS Marketplace site to do this human labeling for you. And then again, with auto labeling and label consolidation, we're able to provide higher accuracy and lower cost to that process. Uh, and again, we're uh, live now in five regions, four in the US and Tokyo, and as you can imagine, we'll be rolling this out to more uh, regions uh, in 2019. Yeah, 
Yeah, so there's um, four key scenarios, and I'll sort of back up. Maybe I didn't go through those very carefully, so let's spend a couple minutes on that as long as we have time here. There's many. Repeat the question. Yep. Hey, Twitch, sorry. Get to it. Cool. Yeah, so in terms of uh, pre-built labeling tasks, uh, right out of the box, uh, Ground Truth is gonna provide uh, the ability to do bounding boxes and basically label uh, objects in a uh, photo. So the simplest case is draw a box and tell me if this is a bird. I may have provided additional labels down the right side. In my demo, I could have said, Show me all birds, elephants, tigers, leopards. Show me trees. Um, in a driving scenario, obviously there would be a lot to talk about. So um, driving to work every day, I go on the Embarcadero and I make a left, uh, left turn onto Washington. And it's interesting, when I get to the corner of Embarcadero and Washington, there's actually two sets of, of street lights. And I stop there, it's a really long light, and I study these things and I think to myself, oh, okay, there's one set for me, because I'm in a car, and there's a second set for the Muni trolleys that are running right next to me. So there's train tracks that run up the middle of the Embarcadero, and they have their own set of lights. And so if I'm doing a semantic segmentation, I wanna be super clear with my users. I wanna say, show me all traffic lights. Okay, well, they may pick traffic lights for cars. They may also pick traffic lights for Muni. I'm gonna tell my car, go when it's green. And what's gonna happen, right? It's gonna see a green Muni light. It's gonna make the left turn right into a trolley. So what I need to do in the uh, bounding box scenario, or, or sorry, in this semantic segmentation scenario, is I need to provide very, very explicit instructions on what to label. This is a street light for a car. This is a red light. This is a yellow light. This is a green light. This is a horizontal line for the trolley. It's white. Here's a vertical, or I get it backwards, a horizontal red line for the trolley. That means stop. A vertical white line means go. And those are different sets of lights. And so I can produce, uh, offer my labelers lots and lots of options so that they can go in and be very explicit about what they're tagging. So the bounding box example I gave is very similar, a uh, very simple uh, case where we're just tagging one object, a dog, uh, but you can get as sophisticated as you like to. And again, if you run out of headroom with the image classification, semantic segmentation, or the text classification, uh, you can build your own custom tasks and modify that UI uh, with your own HTML just the way Tyson Foods did. Yeah, so the question was, um, you can, using custom tasks, go in and provide a different set of instructions. You could even provide different UI elements uh, based on the use case. And that's exactly what uh, Tyson Foods did in theirs. And you saw they had the array of, uh, I don't know if it was 12 images, maybe it was four across by three rows. Uh, but they built that custom UI and they allowed you to go in and click on the image that wasn't uh, chicken. Yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can just jump ahead here. All right. So, I mean, that's a lot, right? Um, SageMaker uh, is an evolving uh, family of products. Um, we're adding more and more features to it as we go. There were a number of other features uh, announced at reInvent 2018. I believe there was a machine learning session this morning. Uh, so I encourage you, 
Uh, machine learning is very new to me. Like a lot of my customers, I'm sort of learning as I go along. And so what was really cool for this talk was I was able to go into SageMaker Ground Truth. Uh, at the beginning of the documentation, there's a getting started guide. And within just a few pages of the getting started guide, I was able to create a job, put some images in an S3 bucket, and start labeling those. Uh, the whole thing probably took me half an hour um, to get that job up and running and start labeling. Um, so the getting started guides are just fantastic. Uh, I don't know our documentation folks, but they do a great job. And then again, we've got um, uh, Jupyter notebooks built into SageMaker. Uh, these are basically editable um, HTML pages that have a mix of code uh, and data. And basically what you can do is go in and I'll just pick one here. And again, this is something new to me. There's a uh, ground truth image classification uh, sample here. Now what you're looking at up here is text, but right below it in this box, I've got actual Python code that I can run. And then I got some more text and I've got some more code. Oh, sorry guys, forget to jump out of uh, presentation mode. I get so excited about Jupyter Notebooks. <laughs> okay, so we'll come back. And I'll try to bring this up a little bit. So when you create a SageMaker instance, and so now I'm talking about SageMaker, not SageMaker Ground Truth, uh, it'll create a uh, SageMaker instance with Jupyter Notebooks on it. There's a bunch of sample notebooks in there. You can create your own. Uh, one of the samples is a uh, image classification one. And what's cool about this is there's text here with instructions and links. And then one of the features of Jupyter Notebooks is you can embed code right in the page. So this is actually a step in my uh, code. And then I've got some more text and then I've got some more code. And again, just as you imagine a scientist notebook, you've got some code and some text, and you can then just go up and uh, run this thing, and it will actually process each step, print the output in line for each step, and you can sort of follow along. Um, so again, it's a new concept to a lot of folks, it's new to me, and um, I think uh, what's nice about SageMaker is there are several of these pre-built notebooks built right into the product. You can go in there, step through them line by line, get a feel for Jupyter Notebooks, get a feel for Python if you haven't used that language before, and then get a feel for some of the SageMaker uh, features, including um, SageMaker Ground Truth. Um, and then again, the documentation, we'll talk a lot, a lot about the um, algorithms that are used uh, underneath all this stuff. Um, so I used uh, an object detection algorithm for those uh, puppies, uh, but we have several others built into SageMaker that are again optimized to take advantage of the massive compute capability at AWS. We've got these P3 instances with um, uh, Volta uh, GPU cards in them. Uh, I think the largest size is something like $64,000 worth of GPUs in the instance, and you can scale your fleet out and just do a massive amount of parallel training uh, on that uh, fleet. And these algorithms have been tuned in SageMaker to be able to scale out to those super powerful P3 instances. Um, and then again, once your model is done, you can deploy it on an M5 large if you've got just a few instant, a few inferences. Um, you can deploy it on a green grass device that might be as small as a Raspberry Pi. You can deploy that model on a snowball, right, for local inferences at the edge. Um, so again, if you want to get to know some of the uh, machine learning algorithms behind um, SageMaker, we've got those documented uh, really well here too. I don't know the, you know, the words in languaging if they use Java over here and something else over there or whatever, but is there like a way I can port a whole system onto your system? 
Yeah, so the question is, uh, can we leverage prior art, right? Are we gonna build all this from scratch or is there stuff out there in the world? And the answer is yes, you can absolutely bring in that prior art uh, to uh, AWS and into SageMaker in particular. So for example, I talked about a couple of things. One is that ornithology study where Cornell Labs did that massive bird identification project. Uh, if you were doing something similar, you might use that already trained data set to maybe track, uh, again, you're photographing birds in a migratory route. You've got a camera set up uh, in, let's say, Atlanta, and you're expecting birds to fly south for the winter, and you're tracking photo, 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 and you're not seeing the bird you'd expect. All of a sudden, you can make some predictions around how you, maybe that bird population is down for some reason. Maybe we want to figure out why. Similarly, models that have been built uh, can be imported. We offer something called BYOM, Bring Your Own Model. And basically, behind the scenes in SageMaker, all of those algorithms just live in Docker containers. And so you can go up to the web and talk to folks who have done prior art and get their containers and plug them in uh, to this environment as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely, uh, it's tricky stuff. There's a ton of research going on around the world and um, definitely collaborate. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. And um, uh, there are a number of, um, again, data sets out there. There are a number of models out there. And then the pool of knowledge is just growing uh, exponentially with the new um, sort of, uh, I don't know what they call it, third wave in, in machine learning interest here. Okay, so that's everything I have. Thank you so much for sticking with me over this hour. I realize it's uh, late in the day. Uh, I really appreciate your time. I know your email has probably been flowing in the whole time you've been sitting here, and I appreciate you taking an hour out to learn about SageMaker Ground Truth. And um, please be sure and fill out your surveys at the end. So thank you very much.